Hi, everybody. I miss you all so very much, and I am here to read Chapter 17 of Weasel. Please follow along in your book as we read together. Chapter 17 begins on page 105. The March days followed one another, it seemed to me, without a clear notion about where they were heading. One day was warm and sunny with the smells of damp earth and worms and things coming alive, and the next day would come blowing and snowing and setting things right back to where they'd been. I expect it was like that every year, but I'd never found it so contrary before. Pa and Molly didn't seem bothered by it. They were in high spirits making plans for planting. Pa had let Molly order flower seeds, and she spent hours drawing pictures of Mama's garden, showing what she'd plant where and how it would look. Pa had spent the winter mending harness, fixing tools and sharpening the plow blade, and he was itching to get started. And they talked all the time about the fiddle contest and dance that Colin Whitefield's daddy put on every year on the first day of April. We used to go every year when Mama was alive, and it was about the most fun of the whole year. We didn't go last April because we were mourning for Mama. But Pa was determined to go this year and see that we had a good time. Molly was busting her britches about it, but I, for my part, didn't much feel like singing and dancing. We planned to leave early in the morning and stay, as Pa said, till the last tune was fiddled and the last dance was danced. Aren't you afraid of falling asleep on the way home, Pa? Molly asked. I always do. Pa laughed and said, We'll just have to count on Job to get us home. He knows the way better than I do in the dark. The first day of April dawned clear and warm. As the sun was rising, I went out to hitch Job up to the wagon. Molly came out after a while in a new dress she had made for herself out of one of Mama's. You look real nice, I told her. She looked pleased and surprised, too. Wish I could say the same for you, Nathan Fowler, she replied. No girl's going to dance with you the way you look. I looked down at my trousers, which were too short, and my everyday shirt and shrugged. What did I care how I was dressed? The only reason I was even going to the dumb dance was because Pa would make me go. Anyhow, even if I didn't want to. But I wasn't going to dance with any girls, no matter how much Molly teased. Pa came out looking real handsome, with his dark hair and beard neatly trimmed. Next to his whiskers, his shirt stood out white and clean. We led the wagon round front of the cabin and loaded in the basket full of biscuits, chicken, and preserves, the quilts for the ride home, and Pa's mouth harp so he could join in the music. I added some grain for Job, and we were on our way. Pa let me drive the wagon, and I was glad it was Job and not Crabby doing the pulling, what with all the soft mud and swollen creek beds we had to go through. Job was full of beans after his winter in the barn, and I had to keep holding him back with a pull on the reins and a slow there, Job. Steady now, boy. It's a long trip you've got to make. He knows he's going to a dance, shouted Molly. And that got Pa going on a silly song about a horse who went to a dance and fell in love with a pig by mistake. The air felt fine on my face, and the woods were full of the smells and sounds of spring. Red buds showed on most all the trees, and a fuzzy greenness surrounded the branches of the willows. Pa and Molly were in such fine spirits, I found myself joining in the singing and fooling. It seemed that all the creatures of the forest were forgetting to be cautious, too, now that spring had come at last. We stopped to watch a flock of turkeys so caught up in their courting games that they paid us no mind. The gobblers spread their fancy tail feathers and strutted about, showing them off for the hens, who were more interested in looking for bugs in the grass as far as I could tell. See, Molly, why bother getting all dressed up when the girls don't even notice, I joked. Orioles and blue jays and finches flew about, gathering sticks and grasses for their nests, and even the shyest creatures, the raccoons, groundhogs, foxes, and deer, were out sniffing the air and feeling the sun on their faces. I thought I knew how a bear must feel coming out of his winter darkness into the light. And that's the end of chapter 17.